Hello folks! Welcome to the final video, at least for today, for front-loading. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. Cheers. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do the usual disclaimers and a bitch, I just want to say something, for the love of God. Dr. Israel likes to repeat himself. Ad nauseum. Ad nauseum. But there's a reason why. There's this whole concept. It goes back to the Nazis. Considering he acts like one, particularly Mingala, shouldn't be all that surprising. Or if he just keeps saying something over and over and over again, he thinks people will buy it. The unfortunate fact is sometimes that's true. This is why you have Kool-Aid drinkers. Who do I call the Kool-Aid drinkers in regards to Dr. Matthew Israel? The Parents Association of the JRC. See, they bought his lies. They bought the propaganda. They drank the Kool-Aid. And the interesting folks that do drink the Kool-Aid, what I've learned just from dealing with anti-vaxxers ad nauseum, is no amount of logic, facts, data, video, audios, statistics, anything is going to convince them that what their cult leader has told them is a lie. They're true believers, which makes them some of the most dangerous individuals on the planet. This is why education is important, folks. Many of these individuals are not educated in regards to their kids' diagnosis. They are trust. They are taught, like most of us, to just trust, have almost a blind faith in those who carry a doctorate. You can't. What makes it even more scary is the education system these days does not seem to try to teach these kids in any way, shape, or form how to form critical thinking skills. That makes people like Dr. Matthew Israel that much more dangerous because kids aren't taught how to look into things and decide from themselves anymore. They're taught to buy whatever is being sold. It's a very disturbing picture. I hope that somehow we can get back to at least teaching individuals how to think for themselves. And since the schools don't seem to be doing it anymore, it's got to start happening at home. That's just a fact. All right, now for my disclaimers, as per usual. In the description box, folks, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It is written by Neuroquestic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's quote-unquote behavior modification program. Now, excuse me while I switch. My leg is killing me. Oh. Matter of fact, yeah. They don't want you reading this article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they do not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Please read our, the article and don't forget to share on all your social media. You got ne linked in there also Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding, folks, in case the JRC actually has the balls to see through with their threat. We got the, also, we have the crowdfund. Yes, we're crowdfunding in case the JRC actually has the balls to see through with their threat. We got the pertinent links to the Agape boarding school situation as well. Agape boarding, the boarding. I can't brain. I can't brain, okay? It's, it's been that kind of day. 
Agape Boarding School is a Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has and pending over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it. These have been substantiated by the hard evidence found done by the independent investigations done by the Missouri Department of Social Services, and they include the following. Sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor with full access to the boys who's still on the premises up on multiple, again, substantiated claims of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault with the boys there. You have a brand new attorney general who's just another make it trumper. Please kill me. And we've got our governor, who's piped up on a power trip from hell. So, please read all those articles and share them on all your social media. Don't forget to share and sign the change.org Shut Agape Boarding School Down petition. we got the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org Shut the Judge Rotenberg Center Down petition. When we discuss the JRC, folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of peoples with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please go ahead. Use your headphones, all right? All right, this channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity and we discuss dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and watching this channel, parental supervision is very obviously advised, all right? All right, trigger warning, we are about to descend once again into the mad ravings of the lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear numerous, so many lies, guys, just so many lies. Pseudoscience, victim blaming, gaslighting, enough ableism to circle the globe a few times, and abuse of apologensia galore. So just be prepared for that, all right? I did kind of pre-read this, just know... If you're anything like me, you're going to rage. All right, let's see here, shall we? <clears throat> Behavioral skin shock is extremely effective procedure with no significant adverse side effects. Again, that is a lie. This is what I mean when I say he's the king of, he repeats himself, he repeats himself, he repeats himself, he repeats himself. Saying it a million times doesn't make it so, doctor. And you're sure as hell not going to convince me just because you say it repetitively. But he does this, folks, because there are particular individuals that this does work on. Again, I will state what makes this so dangerous nowadays is none of these kids are being taught in their schools how to develop critical thinking skills. They're taught what to think, not how to think. Makes individuals like Dr. Matthew Israel very dangerous because they've got very easy pickings. But that's besides the point. Let's go ahead and dispel this lie right now. If there was no side effects, why do you take the device off of certain children for long periods of time, doctor? Because it has been noted by those who don't have a dog in the fight, but this is done so that they're able to heal up. There's no significant side effects. What are they healing up from? Again, if there's no side effects, why are there ER documents from Andre McCollins and the two boys who were shocked over 71 times? Why are there individuals who have come forward since the FDA hearings who have told us that where the electrodes were placed, they have now lost complete feeling? Because there's a word for that. It's called side effects. Just say. A very provable lie, doctor. We have receipts. Behavioral skin shock is one of the most extensively published procedures in the scientific literature. There are over... 113 peer-reviewed papers dating back to the 1960s that the document its effectiveness in treating a wide variety of behavioral problems. Lie! 
like. Let's discuss this, shall we? First off, what he's referencing in regards to the 1960s is a completely different kind of electroshock. He is very evasively doing this because he wants you to be convinced of this idea that this is actually prevalent. It is not. There is only one place in this world that uses the device that he does, and that is the Judge Rotenberg Center. What he is referencing here is a completely different treatment called ECT, which is what the world is most familiar with. There are individual diagnoses in extreme situations that an ECT shock is absolutely something that can help and change someone's life. What he's not telling you is how highly controlled it is when ECT is used. Every precaution is taken to make sure that the treatment they are going to receive is as painless as humanly possible. Medications, numbing gels, all kinds of things go into it before the treatment is administered. That's not what Dr. Matthew Israel does. What he's trying to do is put you in mind of ECT. So it makes you think, oh, okay, well, he must be doing the same thing with the skin shocks. He's not. He is doing absolutely nothing to minimize the pain that he's putting these kids through. Also, what he's not telling you is you can't really compare the two because ECT is a shock to the brain. The GED shock is a shock to the skin. These are not the same things, nor do they have the same function. One is used for those with severe depression and other disorders. The other one is a device designed by Dr. Matthew Israel himself to cause pain to his students. So, these papers that he's referencing from the 60s, first of all, are outdated. Can we mention the fact that medicine and treatment has evolved, particularly for people with neurodiverse disabilities, light years since the 1960s? Light years from back from 10 years ago, even. Now, the 113 peer-reviewed papers were mentioned in by Anderson Cooper back in 2012 in regards to the Andre McCollins, and this is something his lawyer said. Afterwards, in which they brought on a psychiatrist from one of the largest practices in the United States. He and several others who have come forward since then have said that that is a lie. What Dr. Matthew Israel calls peer-reviewed are people he has from inside the JRC itself, review his work. That's not peer reviewed. He's paying their paycheck, folks. That's not an unbiased peer review. Matter of fact, that individual was able to tell us that there is not a single one, not fucking one, not one, peer-reviewed paper, any paper that the JRC has put out that has been peer-reviewed. That is a lie. And then once again, doctor, a very provable one, I might add. Okay? The papers that he's talking about stopped about around the 70s because medicine evolved. Funny, right? And the fact that you're bringing up those papers from the 60s to justify what you're doing in 2010. Decades later, after treatment has evolved and the concept of varying levels of autism the first began to introduce itself makes your treatment obsolete and nonsensical for you to tout papers that old as justification. Actually does the exact opposite, doctor. Just, you're literally referencing individuals who used to smoke in their office while taking care of patients, okay? That's the decade you're talking about there. 
but let's go on, shall we? Three recent papers document the effectiveness of JRC's particular behavioral skin shock procedure. In the 2007 Research and Developmental Disabilities published article by Drs. Van Arsra, Israel, Van Huyen, and Duker entitled Side Effects of Contingent Shock Treatment. Again, you are citing yourself and using it as an argument. This is not how peer review works, you moron. You're not touting anyone outside your psychosphere. This is not coming from Yale. It's not coming from Harvard. It's not coming from any other place than Dr. Matthew Israel. You can't cite yourself in an argument to defend yourself. Really? He's doing it again. And he's using his own paper as a means to defend himself. This is how paper thin this shit is. The fact of the matter, what this should tell you is that the reason why he touts himself as sorry, it's research and studies is because nobody outside of his insane asylum that he calls staff is going to corroborate his bullshit. No one else is going to have a paper in support of his bullshit. But this doctor can't even be clever enough to just use the physicians that he uses within his school. No, this dude has the hubris to go ahead and the hubris, sorry, to use his own paper in defense of his bullshit and try to infer it's peer reviewed. It is not. Every single doctor he just mentioned, he pays their paychecks. That is not peer reviewed. Okay? I'm just saying. And it is batshit insane that you would dare to the UN special repertoire on torture that your contempt and your arrogance is so large and your sense of self is so fucking inflated that you think you can get away with touting your own fucking paper as evidence for your argument and then try to infer it is peer reviewed when it is very easy for the special repertoire on torture to see that these are people that you employ. And then you expect it to be taken seriously. It just blows my mind completely. But let's read his little abstract, shall we? In this study, the side effects of contingent skin shock treatment were addressed with a group of nine individuals who showed severe forms of self-injurious behavior, SIB, and aggressive behavior. Side effects were assigned to one of the following four behavior categories, positive, verbal, and non Verbal utterances, negative verbal and nonverbal utterances, social and appropriate behaviors, and time off work. When treatment was compared to baseline measures, results showed that with all behavior categories, individuals either significantly improved or did not show any change. Negative side effects failed to be found in this study. Gee, I fucking wonder why. Is it because you're the one doing it, doctor? This is, again, I'm going to tout my paper as my evidence. Trust me, bruh. Right? That's his defense. Every time, trust me, bruh, I'm a doctor. I've heard of a lot of doctors, Mr. Israel. Some of them are completely batshit. You're reminiscent of one of them. His name is Yosef Mingala. I'm sure he would have told us there was no negative side effects to his fucking experiments either. You can't tout yourself as your source and then say this conclusively proves because it doesn't prove shit. It is still just you. It's just your word. It's not being corroborated from anybody outside of your psycho circle. This is insane, and he gets away with it. That's what's mind-boggling to me. 
And he wants to use this to prove to the UN it's not torture. By citing himself. I'm sorry, I know I keep going off on this, but there's just the sheer arrogance. The sheer inflated massive ego of this guy. Fuck's sake. Why would I expect you to find any negative side effects to something that is bringing your school millions of dollars a year? But we would stop. We would just trust us. Really? Coming from the boy who has six students' deaths on his hands. Yeah, this is literally the third time, folks. The third fucking time he has toted his own work as evidence that what he's saying is right. This dude's inflated sense of self makes me want a needle so I can poke it and so it can bust like a balloon. In 2008, the Journal of Behavior Analysis of Fender and Victim Treatment and Prevention published an article by Dr. Israel. Here we go again. You can't cite yourself as evidence, doctor. You very much have a dog in the fight. You are not unbiased. A peer-reviewed study would be a completely uninvolved party who has no dog in the fight whatsoever doing a study. That's a real paper. That's real peer review. Fuck me. Let Kushman Boone and Rivera, same doctors, all on your payroll of the effectiveness of the GED shock procedure in treatment of aggression entitled Treatment of Aggression with Behavioral Programming Includes Supplementary Skin Shock. So once again, here's what he's going to do before I close out. He's once again going to cite that it doesn't harm anyone, in spite of the fact that we have literal fucking ER documents that prove the contrary. We have multiple DESI reports that prove the contrary. Matter of fact, we have several DESI reports that report skin burns up to and including second to third degree burns to where you will have to take the devices off the kids in order for them to be able to heal. You're trying to tell me there's no side effects? And then you're going to use yourself your paper as evidence that it doesn't harm anyone as though you didn't have a dog in the fight that's not non-biased doctor it's called conflict of interest which means your argument is complete crap it's not even worth the paper that it's written on it would be best used as toilet paper i'm gonna close out on that We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, I hope you have a good one. Now I'm going to go kick my ass so hard that I can, like, forget the fucking stupid I just read. (laughs) Bye-bye, everyone. Mr. Kitten, say bye. He says bye-bye. Musical key.